my testing, my testing, my testing, my testing. Hi student, uh, thanks for waiting. Good evening to all the students. I hope you are doing well at the Wednesday night. So yeah, last week we, we just finished about Selangor set one paper one. So today we'll continue about the Selangor set one paper two. Well, which is Kata's duel. Right, I, I don't know, a lot of argument about, uh, so this is a uh, set one, so this is set two. Uh, actually, I don't really mind. I don't care if set one or set two as long as uh the discussion can help the student then I'm fine. Yeah. Uh anyways, um let's let's begin. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to say hi to what? Ipen? Or I pen? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hi. Yeah. Okay, so let's start the first question, vector. So it's about eight mark question. Yeah, um, let's have a look at the question. Uh, if, you are Mal if you study Malay in, in school, then you can read the Malay version. So, but I will read the English only. Lah. So the di diagram one actually show the triangle OPQ on the Cartesian plane. And O is the origin. Given that R and S lie on the straight line, OQ and PQ respectively, where you have a ratio. So OR is ratio 2, RQ is ratio 1. And then we have another ratio, QS equals to 5SP. Then QS over SP is equals to 5 over 1. So that QS ratio SP is 5 ratio 1. So QS is 5, SP is 1. Alright, this is all the ratio I can get from the question. So then I will start doing from there. Yeah, I will say hi to Alif and Afifa. Yeah, I'm very bad in pronouncing the name. If I read your name wrongly, please forgive me. All right, so now we know OP is 6i. And we know OR is, OR is here. It is basically 2i plus 4j. Okay. Um, sometimes I prefer write in the column vector, especially when I see i and j. Uh, I will just say uh, this is 2, 4. So OP is 6i, right? So it's basically 6, 0. Because it doesn't have the J, it only have the I here. Okay, then find the coordinates of Q and S. Okay, remember here, if in the vector topic, they ask you to find a coordinate, basically they want to find a position vector. Remember this? If in vector topic, they want you to find a coordinate, they want to find a position vector. So therefore, you cannot just write a Q here to the Q itself is not a vector. Vector must start from somewhere and end with N as some somewhere. So therefore, coordinate Q itself mean OQ. Okay, this is what we want to find. We want to find OQ. So OQ based on um here, it's not hard to see. OQ basically have three out of two of OR, isn't it? Okay, say it's 1.5 of OR. Then, because OQ take 3 ratio, OR take 2 ratio, right? So this is a reason, this is how I get 3 over 2 really fast here. So 3 over 2, what is my OR? My OR is 2, 4. So um, 3 over 2 times 2, and two, 3 over 2 times uh, 4, right? This one simplified, I get 1 and 2. Lah. So I should get 3, 6. Okay, so I got my OQ is 3i plus 6j. So therefore, this is OQ. Huh? If I write in a coordinate form, this one I call 3, 6. Because it makes sense, right? You imagine, if I from O to Q, uh, if, I, if I go 6 unit here, if I, I'm, if, I mean, if I go 3 unit here, I get 6 unit here. So this coordinate is 3, 6 also makes sense to you, right? This is the reason why I will start with the O to write OQ as a position vector because we relative to the O. Because we read the coordinate, definitely we relative to the origin. This is how we read the co uh, coordinate, right? So, yep, I hope it makes sense to you. Lah. Okay, then done the coordinate Q. We want to find a coordinate S here. So, like I say, coordinate S, 
basically is the position vector of s. So position vector of s, basically I want to find o, os. Find os. So os, depending on how you want to find, I can say is, um, yeah, I want to find os, right? Uh, os, okay. Oq plus qs, maybe? Is there any faster way I can do? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. So, OQ, we basically, do we have OQ? Yeah, we just did the OQ, right? 3, 6. QS, uh, the QS is the problem because we don't have any QS here. But I think we can find a QP now. We can find a QP if you want. Uh, QP basically is QO plus OP. Q to O, Q to O is negative, negative 3, negative 6. O to P is 6, 0, right? So if I simplify this one, I should call 3 and negative 6, right? Yeah. So since QP is this one, so I know QS is 5 over 6 of QP, right? Because QS is the only take 5 ratio. QP takes 6 ratio, so it should be 5 over 6. So this is 3, 6 plus 5 over 6 of QP, negative 3, negative, I mean 3, negative 6, sorry. Because they're in the same direction, so I don't need to add a further negative. So of course, if you're not sure, you just do 5 over 6 times 3. Yeah, it's 5 over 2. So this one should be 5 over 2, I just write 2.5, okay? And then I 5 over 6 multiply 6, then I get multiply negative 6, then I get negative 5, right? Negative 5. So I should get something like uh, 3 plus 2.5 is 5.5. .5. And then 6 minus 5 is 1. So therefore, I got a coordinate S is called 5.5, 1. Okay, or you prefer the fraction, you can write 11 over 2 and 1. It's the same thing. Done A and B. This is how we get the format. Not too bad. Okay, then we want to determine the unit vector in the direction of the vector Rs. So basically what we want to do here is we need to find the vector Rs and then we need to find length of Rs. After that, we can find the length of Rs. In this topic, we call magnitude of Rs. Then we can find the unit vector. Cool? Okay, so let's find about Rs. Where is the Rs? Okay, I can say RO plus OS seems easier. Okay, Rs should be RO plus OS. R to O um, is, OR is 2, 4, right? RO is at a negative, right? So negative 2, negative 4, plus OS is 5.5 .5 and 1. So negative 2 plus 5.5 .5 is 3.5. Uh, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Okay, this is Rs. Then I want to find the length of Rs, which is magnitude. So we square root 3.5 square plus 3 square. Square root 3.5 square plus 3 square. Now you might say, sir, there's a negative, huh? but since negative square still get positive, right? So I just ignore the negative. So it's square root 85 over 2. Okay, then, yeah, then we know the unit vector of Rs is actually Rs over length of Rs, right? This is the formula for unit vector. Yeah, all of us should know, should know this. So, yeah, let me write it nicely. Um, yeah, some students prefer i and j, so I will just write in i and j here. Um, this one is called 3.5i minus 3j divided by square root 85 over 2. Okay, so I can use a calculator here. Negative uh, 3.5 divided by square root 85 over 2. Uh, the 2 do not have square root uh, over 2. Yeah, so we get this one. 7, so 85 over 85 minus. This one is the same thing. I change the, this thing to negative 7. Uh, negative 3, I mean. So minus 6, so 85 over 85. Okay, this is how we get the unit vector of Rs. Yep, so I hope it's not too bad for you. 
Yeah, because here they ask us to leave your uh, give your answer in the simplest search form. Okay, simplest search form here got one rule. Uh, uh, I must say here. So denominator can never have third. Uh. Denominator can never has third. Okay, because if we do manually here, supposedly because this one we use calculator, we play some cheat. So we do manually here, normally two I will multiply on the top. So I will get something like RS uh, is basically 7i minus 6j over square root 85. Yeah, a lot of students might leave the final answer like this. Minus 6 over 85j. Do you see? This one is in the third form, but it's not the simplest form. Not yet the simplest form. So therefore, we need to multiply third 85 here, multiply third 85 here, same here. We need to multiply third 85, multiply third 85. This is the reason why calculator will tell you 7 third 85 over 85. I minus 6 third 85 over 85 J. Okay, because when we say simplest form, we cannot allow the third at the denominator. Okay, I hope you can understand. Huh? It's a very important tips here. Not really tips, but yeah, remember this. Okay, yeah, then we get a mark here. Not too bad. Okay, question two. Okay, this one, um, I'm not sure how many of you learn how to find an area of rhombus. I'm not 100% sure, did you learn this formula at your form 3 or form 4? If this is a rhombus, that means 4 lines also have the same length, isn't it? Then we have the di diagonal here. This one I call it diagonal 1. one. Then we have another diagonal here. Then we call it diagonal 2. So one area formula is for, di for rhombus is half diagonal 1 multiply diagonal 2 okay so yeah if you know this formula then this question will not be too difficult for you but if you don't understand this one it might be a bit hard for you okay so the given the length of the two diagonal of the rhombus so we have two diagonal 2 plus 3 and 3 plus 48 okay i know i know 48 we cannot call certain uh, because we don't yet simplify it this one I should call four sub three. Okay, so okay, we have two diagonal, so we're going to multiply them. The first one is uh, two plus sub three. Another one is three plus sub forty eight, which is four sub three. Right then, I will just um multiply them. Okay, six plus eight sub three plus. 6 plus 8 sub 3 plus 3 sub 3 plus 12. Okay, so this is 1 over 2 and then this one is 18 plus 11 sub 3. So the final answer should be 9 plus 11 over 2 sub 3. Okay, this is how I get the area. Yeah, you just need to understand about this formula. Then this kind of question shouldn't be too hard. So remember, this is a formula for area of rhombus. So if you're not sure, make sure you write it down somewhere in your notes so that next time, at least you know how to find area of rhombus using the diagonal. Okay, so yeah, done, three mark. Give your answer in this form, right? So yeah, is my fi final answer in that form? Yeah, yes, good. Then I no need to further simplify. Okay, another lot of questions here. Um, Charlie the Nilai P, I mean find the Nilai P. So to those near Charlie Nilai, okay, and then we find this one when A is equal to this thing. I'm not sure. We are here, it doesn't say without using the calculator. Applicable for kite. Yeah, I think you can do it for kite. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. If this, today you have kite, right? This is A, right? This is B, right? Okay, this is shape of kite. Huh? 
I think kite the area also is A plus B divided by two. If not mistaken lah. But yeah, for Ali friend, you better go Google it and then double confirm with it. But I, if I not remember wrong, should be this one lah. So, okay, so this one is not too bad. Log is my favorite topic because I'm quite good in log. Okay, so here I will factorize out the log A. I factorize out log A, factorize out log A, but the last term I cannot factorize log A without moving the five to the top first. So you just imagine this five I move become three power five right here. So if I take out the log A, so plus will become multiply, minus will become divide. Okay, I hope at least you can see it. Then this is log AP. Uh, the one over two, yeah, I can solve it later. Uh, never mind. For Forty-eight multiplied zero point two five divided by three power five. So yeah, this one is log A. Four over eighty-one power one over two. Power one over two basically means square root, right? Cancel, cancel. So P equals to two over nine. Okay, very easy. So hence, find the value of log AP. Okay, so this one may be a little bit hard, but it's not like super hard. Um, log, they say A is square root 2 over 3, P is 2 over 9. They ask us to find this value. If calculator is allowed, this question is damn easy. I just key in everything into a calculator. I should get the answer. Log uh, square root 2 over 3. And then this is 2 over 9. Should, oops, sorry, sorry. And then this one should be... You should get like 2, I guess. Yeah, you should get a 2. This one, of course, is from calculator. However, it's working, is needed. I mean, the question might change a little bit. They say, solve this question without using calculator. Then you write a 2, obviously, the examiner know you are using calculator. Then, we need to show some working. How to get 2? Okay, so you can change base. You can change to any base you want. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. So uh, let me change to the base tree. Okay, so I just say uh, this is log tree over log tree. You can change to base 9 or even change to base 10 or even change to base E. Also, you get the same result. It doesn't matter. So this is square root 2 over 3. All right, then we know divide basically means what? Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, depends how you want to do la. Actually, I can simply. I already see how to simplify. Uh, from here, um, if. Uh, if I square it this one, if I square. Yeah, if I square it this thing. Two over nine divided by this one. If. Okay. If I square root this one, and square at the same time, then I doesn't change the value, right? Because if a, I square root a and square a, I'm getting back the a, right? I don't change the value of a. This is one of the method. If you don't like, I, I will, will do another one. Okay, so these two, I can move to the front. Then, square root of 2, I get square root 2. Square root of 9, I get 3. Over log 3, square root 2 over 3. Then I can cancel, cancel, I get 2. Okay, this is the method number 1. However, some students might think, sir, that's impossible. I can think like this in the exam. Okay, then we're not doing this one. If you can't think like this, then we're doing other methods. So, we know uh, this one, I can say log 3, 2 minus log 3, 9, right? Over log 3 square root 2 uh, minus log 3. Okay, so um, log 3, 9, you should know is 2 over this one. Um, there's a square root 2. I wouldn't say it's 1 over 2. So 1 over 2, I will move to the front. This is 2 minus 1. So what I want to do, what I want to do here is... Um, I want to find some similarity and then I will cancel it, right? So, what if I multiply? Okay, I uh, yeah, I multiply 2 here. 
I multiply 2 here. So top I doesn't change. This is log 3, 2, minus 2. Bottom, this one and this one multiply 1 over 2, cancel already, right? You will get log 3, 2. 1 you multiply with 2, you basically getting uh, 2. Then you cancel, cancel. You're still getting the final answer as a 2 here. Okay, so uh, depend which method is okay for you. But yeah, this is this is how we solve it manually. Yeah, any question you want to ask me? Come. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, log log three nine I can change to like two log three like yes. Can also, can also. Okay, so yep, this is how we solve this log question. Let's move on. Okay, this is my least favorite question. I don't like this kind of question. I uh. make the sentence sound so confusing. And yeah, seven mark. So, but still need to do no choice because if you come out in SBM, yes, no choice. Okay, so the sum of the digits, uh, sum. The sum of the digit, a uh, sum of the digit of three digit number, x y z is seventeen. Okay, so this three digit number, uh, example example, this this one can be um 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 um, I, I don't know, can be something like, uh, nine, nine nine hundred twenty six example. If this is nine hundred twenty six, right? Nine plus two plus six, you get seventeen, isn't it? Nine plus two plus six. You see, you, this is just an example. Uh, I do not know what is my x, y, z. But I know some of these three numbers I will get 17. So the first equation, I can say x plus y plus z is 17. Where x, y, and z represent the digit in 100. So x will be like in 100. Uh, you can see this x, y, z, right? 9 here represent what? 900, isn't it? Then... 2 here represents what, what? 2, 10, right? So which is 20. And the 6 here represents 1, right? So it's 6 times 1, right? so it's 6. So the 100 digits, the 100 digits plus, uh, the 100 digit plus 2 times 10. The 100 digit plus 2 times 10 digits is more than Wow, wow, wow. Okay, 100 di digit here is y, right? So y plus 2 times 10 is more than 2 times the digits, 2 times the 1 digit. So which is 2z. It's more than it, right? So I will just uh, minus 4. It's more than. Oh, plus four, plus four, plus four. I hope it's correct. La. <laughs> this is what sound, if, if my understanding is wrong, do let me know. Do let me know. Yeah, because sometimes it's very hard to like get the idea. I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, am I correct? La? This, this one sounds a bit wrong to me. Let me read one more time. The 100 digits plus two. The hundred digit digits plus oh plus two two times ten digits is it? Okay, 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 okay. I think they should put a comma or what? Okay, no, 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 no. The hundred digits means the y, right? Y plus two times ten digits, which is two. Eh, hey, no, no. Hundred digits is x. So basically, it's hundred digits is x plus two times ten digits plus two y. Okay, this one seems sounds more right on me okay last one if the digits in the hundred which is x which is x and one which is z are exchange place exchange place so x and z need to exchange the place the new seven the the new number is 79 Less than three times the original digits. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, basically, now 
like six and nine they will swap plays or something like that okay so today is Zach Y X okay they, they swap plays the new number 79 is less than three times the original number X Y Z okay I guess this is well, what they're trying to means here and then is it is 79 less than oh no no, no. it's 79 less than then it's, it's 79 less than xyz three times xyz the new number is 79 less than three times the original yeah the original number so it's 79 less than it yeah it's minus 79 okay then this one sounds more right on me okay um uh, it's system equation <laughs> but in the bad way okay so let's do the first two equation ah. okay first equation this one okay first equation I, I write it down uh, second equation I will just rearrange a little bit minus 2z equals to 4 I call this one second equation never mind I say this first equation and then I do I uh, can't do elimination uh, this one sort of need to do the substitution yeah need to do substitution uh, you're so troublesome okay never mind do sub substitution so x is equals to 17 minus y minus z so this is the first equation the second equation sub 2 in 1 So 17 minus y minus z equals to 2z plus 4. Uh, here got still got a plus 2y. Uh, I'm missing it. So uh, here will be 13. Simplify this one. Plus y. Simplify this one. Equals to 3z. Uh, then y is equal to 3z minus 13. Then x is basically equals to 17 minus y right minus 3z minus 13 minus z because i want to change everything in z la, so that it's easier for me to solve uh this one is minus 3z minus 1z minus 4z plus 13 so x is basically 30 minus 4z yeah if too messy <laughs> do let me know la. all right this is third equation this is fourth equation this is fifth equation so i will sub x and y into the fifth equation so uh, z is unknown y is 3z hey, the final equation is what are you the final equation can have the oh the final equation can have x y z uh. am i just thinking too much Maybe. Uh, <laughs> how should I do the substitution here? Uh, let me think. Uh, I want to get the value I want there. Because I thought I want to solve it, so I trying to get the. I trying to get the <laughs> everything in check, and then I, I want to solve it from there. But then I realized my final equation I. I can get a Z there, so yeah, I think just sub and see, should I? Um, okay, the day I want to get Z right, okay, 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 never mind, never mind, try my best, okay, <laughs> try my best, I have no, I, no, the idea like, I get Z power 3 already, shit. Okay, 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 okay. I can solve first. I want to solve this one first. I want to solve this one first. I don't want to be so crazy. Um, this is X, Y, Z also so right in the... Huh? So, this one have value one. This is not algebra, right? This one have the value. The third equation is wrong. 
times one hundred and times ten. Yes, 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 yes. I I understand because because if let's say this is one two three right, I cannot say three two one is equals to one two three. So this is a reason why over here I kind of need to add in the value because if like this right, because if x x y z and z y x is the same thing, so this is a reason why. I need to add in the real value. Yeah, this equation is wrong. Sorry. So this one should be hundred z right plus ten y plus x equals to three. This one is hundred x plus ten y plus z. Yeah. Then I minus seventy nine. Yeah. I guess so. So this one will be three hundred x plus thirty y plus three z equal minus seventy nine. Then okay, then this one I simplify. I got two hundred ninety nine x. This one I simplify. I got twenty y. And then this z I throw here. I got ninety seven z minus seventy nine. Oh yeah. Got it. Okay, then this is the third equation. Okay, okay. So ju therefore, just now the thing because I still need to find all the x, y, z, right? Yeah. So therefore, ah yeah, I accidentally erase something, but it doesn't matter. I can still do it here. So y equals to three z minus thirteen, right? So my x equals to seventeen minus three z minus thirteen minus z. So this one is. Just now we did right. Is it plus thirteen right? This is thirty minus four jack right? Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, I can solve it. Ninety two, ninety ninety seven jack equals to uh two nine nine. The x is thirty minus four jack plus twenty y. Y is three jack minus thirty minus seventy nine. Okay, so yeah, let's do it. Ninety-seven z, two nine nine times thirty, eight eight nine seven zero, two nine nine times four, minus one one nine six z, plus sixty z, minus two hundred sixty minus seventy nine. Ayo, so big value. Negative one one nine six. Plus sixty. Okay, so uh, move here. So we ninety seven plus one one three six z. Here will be eight seven eight nine seven o minus two six o minus seventy nine. <laughs> I hope the number won't go too too crazy. So this is one two three three right? X six three one divided by my answer just now. Yeah, z is seven. Okay, if z is seven, my x will be uh thirty minus seven twenty eight right? X is two. Then I can go back to y. Y is three seven minus thirty right? So twenty one minus this one is eight. So, so therefore the original value x y z. Is basically two hundred eighty-seven. Yeah, because two plus eight plus seven equals seventeen, right? So yep. So the final answer should be two hundred eighty-seven for this original number. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for the collection for the third equation. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I do, I don't like this kind of question. Need to read so many times to ensure what 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 is this. Okay, continue. Second, third, and sixth equation of the arithmetic progression of AP are three sus uh consequentive term of the GP. So basically, over here, I know for the AP, ah, for the AP is like uh T two, T three, and T six. Okay, this three term of AP here, if I arrange like this, it become GP. Okay, so AP formula is A plus N minus one D, right? 
So T2 is basically is A plus D. This is A plus 2D. This is A plus 5D. Since now they are GP, so since now they become GP, so I know second term divide by the first term must equal to the third term divide by the second term. Isn't it? So we kind of need to solve this one to get some equation and then eventually I believe they asked us to find find R right find the common ratio they want us to find R okay let's do it uh, crossover multiply so this is a square plus 4ad plus d uh, plus 4d square equals to this is a plus 5d multiply with uh, a plus d so this one I should get something like a square 5ad plus ad 6ad plus 5d square okay this one and this one I simplify this one and this one I simplify left 2ad and this one this one and simplify get negative d square so d square equals to negative 2ad I divide d for both sides d equals to negative 2a okay if d equals to negative 2a I can sub back to the original equation here so just imagine the first one is a minus 2a the second one is a minus 4a this one will be a minus 10a so I get negative a negative 3a negative 9a so my r is the second term divided by the first term so my r is 3 done so my common ratio will be 3 so this is how we can use the AP term to find the GP by doing this one common ratio formula second term divided by first term is equals to third term or over second term this is the common ratio formula right yeah and then from there we get uh, some D or A we sub back to the equation then we should be able to get the R easily okay um, not very hard need to think a little bit then yeah this four marks still okay okay uh, this one is very hard to see in my eyes but anyways uh, Rila wanted to save money to buy his best friend a gift wow it's really a best friend because nobody buy gift until like 900 something isn't it so the diagram to show his saving for the first three days he continued his saving in the form of an arbitrary progression. Okay, so this is first three days. And then find the amount he saved on the last day when his total saving was announced to buy the gift. Okay, if you want to know how much he saved for the last day, basically they want to find an L value. Lah. So let's see how the pattern first. First day is one ringgit. Second day should be one, two, three, four ringgit, I guess. Uh, I'll four. Third day is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 7. Okay, so, yep, you should be able to see the AP pattern already. Then, let's do it. So, I have 1, 4, 7, and keep on continue. So, if I want to save for 925, I must plus all this money until I have enough for 925, isn't it? So, this one should be... Uh, I have the D. D should be 3. Okay. So we N over 2. 2A two plus N minus 1. D. 9.25. Okay. The 2 I'm going to move here. So it become multiply 2. 1850. So then N will multiply. This one is 2N plus 3N squared minus 3N equals to 1850 so 3n square minus n minus 1850 equals to 0 then if I factorize this one this is 3n and n Ayo, this number what number I can use oops sorry shift factorize 75 and 24 right I mean 70, 74 and 25 25 and 74 yeah so this one should be 25 here 74 here here 75 yeah correct 
So this one it will be um 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 minus and plus. Okay, so since n must be positive lah, so n is twenty five lah. Here n equals to negative seventy. This one I definitely rejected it. So you save for the twenty five day. So if so, what I want to do is I want to know how much for the last day. So last day is basically t twenty five right. The formula is a plus n minus one d right. My a is one, my d is three. So we basically save until seventy three ringgit lah for the last day. So yeah, you just plus all the money together, then you can buy the good gift for his friend. Um, am I doing too fast? Should be fine, right? If you lost it or you don't doesn't get it, you let me know. Yeah, well, thanks, the chuker for for the donation. <laughs> All right, so okay, ah, uh, should be fine on uh, this one. Uh, yeah, not a long mark or so, like seven mark. Okay. <coughs> uh, another geometry, uh, I mean circular measure. Let me drink some water first. Okay, so you have this that diagram three actually show logo in a rectangular, uh, is uh in a regular heptagon, shape A B C D E F G, in crab in a circle with a radius five. So supposedly you should have a circle one, but then this circle right, they actually because they, I think they pull the rubber band, so some part of the circle become different pattern maybe. So, the radius is 5 cm with a center O. So, to complete this lo logo, a black tie rope is needed to make the heptagon, star, and three arc length of the circle. So, if you see carefully, you should be able to see one arc length, one arc length, three arc length. Okay? And luckily, at the beginning, they tell me this is regular heptagon. Why? Then the all the all this diagonal right diagonal all this diagonal must be the same. I mean must be same length lah. Because this one is a regular heptagon, right? So okay. First thing they ask us to find the angle AOB. AOB so because this is heptagon, right, you should have seven of these. So I just take out one of it. Because you should you can get seven of it. Uh. You can see this one if I draw here, two if I draw here, if I draw here, you have three. If I draw here, you have four. If I draw here, you have five. If I draw like this, you have six. The last one is seven. So what I try to prove you is because this heptagon. I can divide the 360 into the seven part if I want to. Okay? Because it is a heptagon, so it makes sense. Because yeah, so therefore this one the angle of AOB will be 2 pi over 7, which is 360 divided by 7. And I know the pi is 3.142, right? 3.142. So yeah, use the calculator. I mean seven. So the final answer is 0 0.6977 radian. Done. Okay, one mark only. Determine if a one meter long black tie rope is sufficient to make the logo. So basically, now they want to know if the string is sufficient here. So I need to find one of the diagonal and then I can see how many diagonal I have here. I have one, I have two, I have three, I have four, I have five, I have six, I have seven. So yeah, the totally I will have seven. I will use the loop to get seven diagonal plus three art length. Okay, so right now I want to know is all, all of this add up together, is it enough for one meter or not okay 
So if enough, then we'll be good. Like, if not enough, then I will say not sufficient. Uh. Basically, we want to prove. Okay, so I want to find one of the di diagonal. I will just draw a line. Draw a line. And then I'm not sure you can see the triangle or not. Yeah, I, wish I want to do this diagonal. I want to do this one. So I, draw, I will draw this one out. So this is the center. This is 5 and 5, right? So this is 5 and 5. And this one is the length of diagonal, isn't it? So yeah. And I can get this angle. If I want to, I can get this angle. Because this one is one part, two part, three part. So if you see carefully, right, you should be able to see this is like one part of the angle, two part and an angle, three part and an angle, isn't it? So just now is this value. So I'm going to time three. So the angle here is 2.6931. Radian uh, in radian. Then I can find the D. There's two ways you can find the D. One is you using the cosine rule, which is the A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. But I'm a lazy person, I will use another one. Uh, another one is for the chord. Normally we find the length of chord, which is 2R sine theta over 2. So we use the second one because it's easier. In this case, we can use it to find the, di the diagonal. So the diagonal, my r is 5, sine, my angle is 2.6931 over 2. So it's 10 multiply sine 2.6931 over 2. So I got the diagonal here, 96. I believe this one is centimeter, lah, okay? Okay, then I want to... F I know I have seven of these later. Now I want to find the art length. Art length formula is S equals to R theta, right? My R is 5. And my theta here just now... Yeah, I think my theta is basically this one, right? 0 point... Well, you got, because you take one part, right? Yeah. Times 0 0.8977. Zero point eight nine seven seven nine five. Now I got this art length four point four eight eight five. So the total length of root required will be nine and not nine seven of the diagonal plus three of the art length. Okay, yeah, I don't see it's bigger than 100 lah. 13.4655, this is 7 times 9.7496. Okay, 68.2472, add up together. 81.8. Point... So this one is still less than 100 cm. So therefore, yeah, this person, right? What is the name of this person? <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, so each is sufficient. Uh. Okay, so yep, this four mark question a lot of work for the four mark. So it's a little bit, so it's slightly, okay, but <laughs> not very hard. But you think a little bit uh, on how to find diagonal. Alright, so find the area, find the segment AG, BC, DE also will be painted with a yellow paint. Calculate the area need to paint. Yeah, you should be able to see. Yeah, they actually painted the yellow thing here, isn't it? So I want to find the area of segment and then I have three of them. Um, formula for area of segment is basically half r square theta minus sine theta okay if you do not know about this formula write it down find square theta is 0 0.8977 right yeah minus sine 0 0.8977 and then i have three of them right so I'll multiply three for the whole thing I multiply 3 for the whole thing because I have 3 area of segment right 
Yeah, then type everything in the calculator. Lor. 3 multiply 1 over 2 times 5 square times 0 0.8977 minus sine 0 0.8977. So 4.343 centimeter square. This is the total area needed to paint for this logo. Mm, yeah. If you know the formula and everything, this question shouldn't be too hard for you. Mm, next. I will discuss until Yeah, I will finish section A la. Do I want to go B? Okay, la, I can go question A. Okay, I can go question 9. Oh my god. I can go question 10. <laughs> so many more. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see how I, how much I want to go. One, one by one first. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I now? Okay. Okay, this one. Uh, integration. So when we use the half AB sine C, good question. Any know anyone know when to use the half AB sine C? This is area of triangle. Okay, so basically you have a triangle. This is A, this is B, this is angle C. This is when you will use it. But actually the ar area of segment we also do use the half AB sine C. But then because I is the A and B is R and R because for sector right A and B will be radian and radius. So it suddenly it become the half R square sine C. And just now I use a sector which is half R square theta minus the triangle, right? Half R square sine C. So you realize I can take out the half R square to form the segment formula, right? So yeah, this is how we this is when we use a triangle. So, 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 so yeah. Okay, so, yep. So, yep, how to do this one? Um, Find the equation of AB is very kind, um, that gives you two marks. So you can see AB is basically is parallel to Y axis. So this one must equal to X equals to A something. So I want to find once you coordinate A. A is the intersection of two curves, right? So I can just substitute the first curve into the second curve. So it's minus X squared plus four. So I got two X squared equals to four. So X basically equals to square root two. Uh. So yeah, this is, this is the equation of AB. So this one is x equals to square root 2. Or you can say here is a square root 2. Lah. So yeah, done. One mark, or two mark, very easy. And then find the area of shaded region. Okay, this area of shaded region, right? Okay, if I, this line is just nice to separate them into two parts. Part A and, uh, do, do I use A and B anymore? Lah. Part 1 and part 2. So if I want to find the area for part 1, right? I need to integrate this curve. Because you can see part 1 is just uh, above this x square curve, right? from 0 to square root x. So for part 1, I will just integrate from 0 to square root 2, the x squared equation, dx. Okay, then I will just do this one real quick. Lah. So this one should be square root 2 power of 3 over 3, right? minus 0. So this one is um, uh, 2 third 2 over 3. Okay, so then we want to find a part 2. How am I going to find a part 2? You can see the part 2 is above this equation, isn't it? And then I do not know what is the x-intercept. So I will need to find this x-intercept. Uh, x-intercept, we will make y equal to 0 for this equation, right? So negative x squared plus 4 equals to 0. x squared equals to 4. x equals to plus minus 2, right? So obviously, I know this is 2. So if I know this is positive 2 already, then if I want to find the so-called part area for part 2, then I will just integrate from sub 2 to 2, right? For the negative x squared plus 4. 
okay then I will just integrate it quickly lah. then we plus both area together lah. so this is negative 8 over 3 plus 8 minus negative uh, 2 sub 2 over 3 plus 4 sub 2 okay you will just use a calculator for everything here lah. negative 8 over 3 plus 8 minus a uh, fraction negative 2 sub 2 over 3 plus 4 sub 2 then give it some decimal lah. 6 1 9 3 okay normally I won't stop here because I will always check the calculator to ensure I almost make zero mistake here okay so this one is negative x square plus 4 and then I integrate from sub 2 to 2 and then I realize I get the same final answer then I'm confident I'm got correct then I check for the first one as well from uh, this one is x square from 0 to sub 2 yeah um this one I'm not sure it's correct or not 9428 uh, 0 0.9428 okay this one I change to decimal and see 2 sub I mean uh, 2 sub 2 over 3 yeah it's the same thing okay so so yeah then I can find the final answer so the area is 0 0.9428 plus 0 0.6193 then you type everything in the calculator lah, you will get the final answer correct okay so always check with the calculator and then for this kind of area you need to use both of the curve equation yeah so well, some students just say so is it possible i integrate 0 to 2 to get the all area not possible because some students will say sir i will just integrate 0 to 2 for x square then you will have some problem because if 2 is here then you will get the whole area here do you see that so but then you don't want this area the green color area here is an extra area is not what you want then how you minus the green the green color one so this is a reason why i don't recommend students to do integrate the x square from 0 to 2 and then trying to find a way to to deduct the green color area which is not rational at all okay yep one more part um the volume generated when the region is powered by the curve both of the curve lah, evolve 180 about the y-axis okay so i want to find an area powered by the curve lah. um so i have this curve and this curve so both of them powered though they are talking about this area lah. so this area going to rotate 180 on the y-axis okay in this case why is 180 why not 360 because you can see both sides this is y-axis right this is y-axis both sides have the symmetry area so that's mean if only have one side then I in order to get the volume right I need to rotate 360 I need to rotate 360 to get the one volume but if I have both sides right that's mean one side rotate 180 the other side here I'm going to rotate another 180 I get the whole volume this is the reason why here they rotate 180 or only so you don't need to do anything like divide two huh don't do that okay okay so yeah definitely this one there's no way i straight away find a whole volume i also need to um divide them into the two part so if you see carefully i will find a volume for part one and part two okay so yeah i need to find all the coordinate as well lah. okay just now this is sub two right I, so i want to know the y coordinate so y is sub two square right so y is 2 so this coordinate here is 2 and this one I want to make x 0 y equals to 0 plus 4 so y equals to 4 so this coordinate here is 4 and this is 0 okay so right now let me find the volume straight away like I'm a, a, a bit lazy so volume rotate on y axis right is pi x square a to b dy right so I want to make x square a subject. This one x square is a subject already, but this one I want to rearrange a little bit. So x square equals to 4 minus y. Huh? Okay, so yep. So I got part one and part two, right? So first thing I find the part one here. So how to get a part one? So here is the pi. I will integrate the 
the top part, which is uh, four minus y from from two to four dy plus the part two, I will integrate another curve from zero to two, which is the y dy. Okay, so it's a bit messy, but I hope you should be able to see. If you can't, you let me know. Um, yeah, need to do it. Uh. So 4y minus y squared over 2, 2 to 4, plus pi. This is y squared over 2, 0 to 2. Okay, so yeah, solve it, and then we can get the final volume. This is 16 minus... Uh, 16 divided by 2, 8 minus, this is 8, 2. I don't know, I do man mental work. I might be wrong, I might be wrong. Uh, but I will do the checking later, like what I say just now. So this is 4, 4, 4, 2. Okay, this is just 2. So this is, here is 8 minus 6. So this is 2 pi. 2 pi plus 2 pi, final answer is 4 pi. Okay, then I will do a quick checking here. So if I integrate from four here cannot type y la, so I type x to represent right okay two to four I'm getting two yeah multiply pi right so it's fine then I integrate again for x zero to two then I'm getting two okay so the final answer is four pi which is correct okay this is how we find the volume for this yep not too hard. Trigonometry, uh, too much. No, I think too much shouldn't be too hard. So I have two cos x minus tangent x over second x cos second x. Okay, let's do it. I want to get two cos two x. Okay. So this one is. It is got tangent x. Ah, uh, sorry, it's got tangent x. So cotangent x is cos x over sin x minus tangent x is sin x over cos x. This one is 1 over cos x multiply 1 over sin x. Uh, make them same thing no matter. I multiply cos, multiply cos, multiply sine, multiply sine. Okay, then you should be able to get something like this. Uh, bottom is sin x cos x is cos square minus sine square and then I will divide it by um, uh, 1 over sine x cos x okay so the di divide change to multiply I can cancel out this one cos square minus sine square is cos 2x Sean. okay uh, not too bad but too much I think maybe your teacher should be more kind to at least give like 3 marks yeah. Or any one of you know any faster way, yeah, you can try any faster way. Okay, then, but this is my way. Okay, so from here, I know the whole thing here is equals to y equals to 2 cos 2x. And they asked me to sketch a graph. Okay, so I'm going to sketch this graph. y equals to 2 cos 2x. So um, p period is pi ray. 2x equals to 2 pi. Yeah, x equals to pi. That's in one cycle in one pi. La. So this one will stop at pi. And then I draw another one more cycle. Nah. <laughs> My drawing is very ugly, but normally I can draw nicer, but draw on this digital pen is not that easy. I hope you can understand me. <laughs> okay, so this one will be uh, pi over 2. This one will be uh, 3 pi over 2 la. and 2 pi. Okay, so maximum is 2, minimum will be negative 2. Okay, so all my maximum here is here. This is my minimum. Okay, so I done. It's quite easy, the graph. Determine the range of the number of solution. Okay, this is kind of the new thing. I like <laughs> its creativity. Because normally they will ask us to find the number of solution. But this is the first question I see in SPM to find to ask you to find the range of the number of solution. 
That means you need to fully understand number of solutions super well in order to do this one. So for this equation, this is 2 cos 2x, right? 2 cos 2x is y, right? So this is y equals to p. Okay, y equals to p, I say this is horizontal line. Huh? If you do not know this horizontal line, this question, there's no way you can get the mark. Okay, what's so important about horizontal line here? Because for any horizontal line here, this is this line must parallel to the x-axis. It decides how many number of solution you can get. If I from here, how many number of solution? One, two, three, four, right? I get four number of solution. If I draw on the top here, the y equals to 2, how many number of solutions I get? 1, 2, 3, right? If I get, I draw over here, the minimum, y equals to negative 2, how many number of solutions I get? 1, 2, right? So that means, here I get 3, here I get, here I get 2, here I get 4. So that means my number of solutions must be between 2 to 4. So that means I can get 2, I can get 3, I can get 4. Is there any way I can get more than 4? No, you can try to draw any horizontal line. There's no way you get more than 4 or less than 2. You're trying to draw any horizontal line, see is it possible to only touch one point? You might say, sir, what if I draw this one, y equals to negative 3? Yes, then number of solution is 0. Then why don't you start from 0? Because they give you the range. They say they, the P must be between negative 2 and 2. This is the reason why you cannot draw negative 3. Because it's out of the range given. Because they already limit the P is between negative 2 and 2. So that the question trying to say is, within negative 2 and 2, how many number of solution you can get? And then put them in the domain. Okay? I hope it makes sense to you. Huh? So yeah, this is the final answer. For my any question you want to ask me? <laughs> yeah, because this is live, right? If you have any question, yeah, you, you can just type over there. Okay. Yeah. What's the time now? Okay. Let's go through a few more. I hope I can do. <laughs> a box contains two types of suite. A and B in the ratio of 1 and 2. Five suites are chosen at the random with the replacement. Okay, so I, I guess the probability of getting A is 1 over 3 and probability of getting B, the suite B is 2 over 3. Should be. Exactly four type Two types of suite. Five suites are children. So n equals to five, right? Exactly four type B suites are children. So yeah. So basically they want x equals to four. So I just assume B is P, yeah. Uh. So right now uh, I want to choose Janice B again. So my P is two over three, my Q is one over three. So I will choose four of this. So it's five C four and two over three power of four, one over three. Power one, that's all. Just type everything in the calculator and then you should be able to get a nice answer. Lah. 3, 2, 9, 2. Done. The part one. More than two type A suites are chosen. Okay, so I, I can just change my type A is my P. <laughs> So that I don't need to think so much. Q, Q is type B basically. So yeah, I want X is more than 2. So you know, get a more than 2, of course you can do 3 plus 4 plus 5. 3 plus 4 plus 5, yeah. You can do that. Or you can do use 1 to minus X equals to X equals to 0. And uh, it's the same thing. Uh. Then you also need to do 3 times. Ah, uh, why so struggling one? Okay, this is 3, this is 2, this is 4, this is 5. And then use the same for use the same formula, okay? But here I'm not going to show you how to use a formula. I already show you here, right? Use the same formula here. Uh, but cannot use this answer, uh, because this answer, P is a suite B. But this 
over here the P is a sweet A uh, so they are not the same candy okay so this one I'm going to use a, a bi binomial formula here a list of binomials number four one so I want to get three four five my N is five my P is one over three so the first one is 0 0.1646 second one is 0 0.0411 the last one is 0 0.0041 okay so you just plus all of them then you should be able to get the correct answer what's the purpose of starting with replacement and if without replacement okay this is a very good question but you go to a higher level that that one play more important to you but now it's still okay but i can explain a little bit because uh in order to do the binomial right right now what we are doing here is calling binomial the probability must be constant and independent that means what the first time i choose the candy a must be one over three then the second time i choose the candy a must remain one over three then this one we call the probability constant isn't it because if the first time i choose the probability of i uh, first time i choose a is one over three second time i choose a is one over four third time i choose a is one over five then you can see the probability is not constant then we cannot apply binomial formula so here the purpose of the tell you with replacement just to tell you this question is the binomial question and you can use the binomial for formula confidently because yeah they are independent and constant for the probability yeah i hope i do answer your question for alif okay so yep you plus yourself la. i'm not going to plus for you la, okay it's very easy so the length of the type of the insect are normally distributed so we know the mean is basically two and variance okay i don't like the variant but i will write down the variant first because i want to change the standard deviation so it's 0 0.3 right yeah so my standard deviation is 0 0.3 uh use a standard deviation logo la. so this is standard deviation so the percentage of the inset the percentage of the inset have the length so i will let the x be the length of inset lah. so right now the length must be more than 2.28 so i will just change it into the z so this is x minus mean over standard deviation okay i'm doing this formula uh, x minus mean over standard deviation 0 0.2 0 0.28 divided by 0 0.3 0 0.933 okay then yeah you can find the probability from the table but is the table given here <laughs> if yes i teach you how to do manually if no then you just use a calculator lah. Uh, it's in the last page is it sorry for scoring if I make you dizzy I'm sorry <laughs> yeah <Nate> is here <laughs> okay so right now what I'm doing is oh my god it's stuck to lag already maybe I scroll too fast just now Okay, it's hanging already. It, I need to restart it. Okay, so. We can try to use a table. I hope one day they can just eliminate the table and let all the students use calculator. La. <laughs> okay, so uh, it's still lag. Oh my god. Um, um, maybe need to wait for a while. <laughs> you don't let me write anything. I, I, yeah, you can see when I write everything, the ink will just disappear. Yeah, I hope Microsoft Word can improve their I mean the Microsoft company can improve their app a little bit. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> so yeah, zero point nine three three. You find zero point nine here. Zero point nine three, which is here. Uh, you can see is zero point one seven nine two, right? Zero point. Okay, we you 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 because you want to subtract, so I don't type the zero. Uh, because nine three three, you need to subtract a three here. The three here is subtract eight. Uh, need to minus the eight lah. Then we'll minus the eight here. Yeah, this one should be my final answer. Okay, so my final answer should be this one, at the zero. Yeah, so this one should be 0 0.1754. Okay, this is use a table. But if I don't want to use a table, I can go into the calculator. I go for normal CD. Uh, the lowest is 0 0.933 and then upper is uh, infinity lah, 10 power 99 then you can see this calculator will also give me the same answer but just without using the table so this is the reason why I hope one day your yeah, SPM will update so that <laughs> nobody will need to use a table anymore but because not everyone can um, buy this calculator because if you are using the old version one right you cannot do inverse normal Maybe because of this, then yeah, the table is still necessary. So the value of M, if 50% of the inset have the length, uh, so the inset, I use the yellow color, have the length less than M, if 50%, 15%, 0 0.15. So yeah, let's solve this one. Um, probability Z, M minus mean over standard deviation is 0 0.15. 1.5 then I draw out the bell shape diagram so uh, less than so we go in the other side so here is 0 0.5 0 0.15 is very small so I should know this m minus 2 over 0 0.3 this one must equals to the negative value how do I know it's negative value because if before 0 right if here is 0 so here is all negative if I go the other side here the z score will be positive okay you should be able to see the dif see the difference huh? so yep so here will be 0 0.15 okay um, I'm lazy to use the table <laughs> so I just use a calculator if anyone do not know how to use the table do let me know so the area is 0 0.15 then I know my jack score is negative it's negative 1.036 okay add a 4 for it so m equals to so negative 1.0364 multiply 0 0.3 plus 2 1.689 okay if cm centimeter okay this is how we solve the binomial it's not very hard right <laughs> yeah come let's let's have a look on this one um linear law normally i will just copy down the equation first should I draw also? Yeah, I'm lazy to draw. Let's see how. Uh, if difficult, then I draw. If easy, then you draw yourself. So they give us a table for x, y. But over here, they ask you to plot y square root y against x. That's mean. Of course, they give you a scale. Uh, 2 cm to 1 unit and 2 cm to 0 0.5 unit. This is not, not important. But the problem is you don't have the table for square root y. So you need to form the table for square root y by yourself. Yeah. So you just square root all the y value lah. Like the first one you square root this one, eight two eight one. Then you get uh something like zero point nine one. Then you square root the second one. Actually, um, there's slightly faster way you can do square root x and then you type calculate. Then you can keep on keying the value easily. Two point eight five six one. Then this one is one point six nine. Then you type calculate again. Then you can change the number to six point two five. And this one is 2.5, this one is 2.5. Then this one, you can calculate again, you can change the value. Because it will be faster, la. no need to type square it so much. Then I calculate again, 16.81, 4.1. Then I calculate again, 23.52. So this one is 4.85. Okay, after I got the square root y already, then I will start plotting. Uh, for <laughs> this one they ask for percentage 
really? Ah, they ask about percentage then we shouldn't be stopped here. Change to percentage. So time 100%, right? So we got 17.54%. Okay, so yeah, I want to thank the student who tell me this. Is this one they ask percentage also? No, right? This one they ask length, right? Yeah. Okay, so this one you just draw yourself. So you just make sure this is square root Y and then this is X. So for two centimeter to one unit, so you should have something like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this one, two centimeter for 0 0.5. You've got 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, all the way up to five, uh, all the way up to five. You just adjust yourself and then you're going to plot it. And then plot already, you want to find a P and Q. Okay, so I just estimate, uh, I'm not going to draw, I just estimate. So the first one is 1 at 0 0.91. 0 0.91 so the first this one must, must be somewhere like this lah. your graph should be somewhere like this so I want to know what is my P and Q in my equation I have an equation like this right so this one a little bit indices needed for this equation because you want to get square root y you need to square root for both sides and they purposely give you 16 which is can be square root 1 this is 4 then square root P square is P and then square root the square, you get x minus q. Okay, so my square root y is 4 over p, x minus 4q over p. Okay, because square root we have plus minus la. Um, but in this case, since they only want the positive square root y, then I doesn't do plus minus. Okay, so from here, you should be able to read some value here. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe let's say example is 0 0.7. Then I will just say this is c, right? So negative 4q over p equals to 0 0.7. And then from there, you can find 4 over p. But this is m, right? y equals to mx plus c. Ma. m is 4 over 9. Then you can, I mean 4 over p. Then you can take any two coordinate to find. So 4 over p, use the gradient formula. La. So I take, maybe I take this one and this one. Okay, I take this one and this one. So it's like 4.1 minus 1.69 over 5 minus 2. Then I will get 4 over P equals to, do this one, 4.1 minus 1.69, bottom is 3. So a uh, fraction, uh, 241 two, over 300. Then I can get the P now, is 4 divided by this answer. Then my P is about 4.9793. Then I can get the Q here. Okay, this 0 0.7 is I assume one uh, is not accurate. Not accurate. You need to draw out the graph, then only you can get the accurate one. Okay, but I just show you how to do. So this is 4.9793 equals to 0 0.7. So you will solve this one to get a Q. So Q is times 0 0.7 divided by negative 4. So your Q should get this value. 8714 okay so this is how I get a P and Q so I will from the graph there take two coordinate to find a gradient and then from the graph there I know my vertical intercept I read the vertical intercept and then as my C value here okay then lastly they ask us to find Y when X equals to 1.7 then you just from this graph here you look for 1.7 here 1.7 you look from here and then you should get some value like this. So let's say example, you get 1.4. Okay, so you, you should know when x equals to 1.7, square root y equals to 1.4, uh, not y. Uh. So y is 1.4 square. This one also is assumed, uh, is not really the answer, okay? So you just do 1.4 square. And you got the 1.96 for your y value. Then you can get the perfect y value here. 10 mark. Okay, like I said, linear law is super easy. And 10 mark is always super easy to get. So, yep. Then you can just draw yourself. Okay, I think... I think I will stop here. The rest of the question, I will just uh, 
discuss on the next lesson I mean next Wednesday and after this paper finish already I will discuss other state paper I don't think I will go to the set 2 la, because some student told me set 2 is for the Selangor is quite similar to set 1 I'm not really sure I will just check out the set 1 and set 2 is it like most of the questions are similar if yes then I will just go to do other state paper la. because right now you we only have two more months then two to three months la, and then we have very limited Wednesday right so therefore we need to fully utilize the time and for all for all my member right whoever joined the 14 ringgit member one yeah maybe we'll discuss some state paper over there as well because like i say we couldn't finish all the state paper before spm because there's so many of them and each of them have paper one and paper two okay so anyways i will update about that for the member all right for all the, my youtube uh, subscriber mean mean yeah free one wednesday one yeah i will see all of you on the next wednesday and we'll continue we'll finish this paper and then we will go to the new paper one i'm not sure which state paper i will choose if any state paper you want me to discuss first maybe you can just type in the group okay if you want to get this paper you can just go to my discord channel and look for youtube live and look for download file you can download over there or you can just google it download it online all right that's all for class today thanks for coming and i hope all of you can help me to like this video because because at least youtube algorithm know yeah this life is not too bad okay so i'll see all of you on the next wednesday see all my member tomorrow 8 p.m have a wonderful night bye bye and good night